And good Monday afternoon. Rainy, wet, cold, but hopefully we'll bring you a little little warmth and fun here for half an hour or 20 minutes or whatever it is. Um, welcome to the uh, Monday live stream with um, Deal Dr. Don. Um, first thing on the agenda, I want to mention um, signing up for the golf outing uh, again. Uh, it's coming up at the end of the month and it's a lot of fun. Uh, I'm sorry, end of next month. I'm getting ahead of myself. But it's a lot of fun. It's a great cause and um, I encourage you all to sign up. Uh, Ninja is coming up. You'll be hearing more and more about that. We may have a special guest uh, on our Ninja or on our live stream uh, coming soon. Stay tuned. Uh, we, we don't we don't give out all the details on these things right away. So uh, just you know, uh, come visit and and, uh, and and see if we have somebody who who joins us one of these days. Uh, over the past several days. Um, Greg and some of others, uh, others on the on the uh, with the management team have looked at some of the uh, phrases and the comments on the comment section, agent remark section, and so on on the multiple listing, and we've got some ob observations. Um, some of the observations are they tend to be vague. I'm going to read them to you, uh, some of them anyway. But the biggest, most important point that I need to make is that if you are going to put something on the multiple listing system, it must also be on the listing contract. For example, if you say that you are going, the seller is uh, not going to have showings before. Sunday, uh, you know, May 3rd at 1 p.m. or whatever time it is, um, you have to have that on the listing contract that the seller is requesting no showings prior to a specific date and time. Uh, and then you can put it on the agent comment section and the marketing comment section. You cannot do that. The MLS will not allow you to do that if it's not on the listing contract. And if you do and it's not on the listing contract, it can be perceived, it can, it's, it's a violation of MLS rules and you may find yourself facing a grievance. Um, the other thing to remember is that if you do have a delayed submission, uh, for example, a delayed submission is a little bit different than a postponement of showings. Postponement of showings is what I just described, which is the seller requests no showings until Friday, Sunday, Monday, whatever. I usually encourage agents that if they're going to have that language in there, that they should also include the language that the seller will not review offers prior to. So the so the clause in the listing contract may sound something like seller requests no showings uh, before May 1st and will not review offers until uh, will not review offers uh, until May 2nd. Um, that way, if you have a buyer who decides that they want to write an offer sight unseen, um, you have it in the contract that um, that the seller is not going to look at offers until then. So you can go at least go back to the agent and say, well, as you see in the contract, uh, the the terms that the seller is offering the co-brokerage fee to you is subject to the terms of the listing contract. And the listing contract clearly says that um, you, uh, seller's not gonna look at offers. Well, that doesn't mean that you as a listing agent have the right to withhold that information. You have to tell your seller that, hey, we do have an offer. You've made an agreement that you don't wanna look at it. Um, until May 2nd, but, um, but, but I do have this offer here. And if they say, fine, hang on to it. Um, and let's pretend for a moment, I say, well, it actually ex expires um, on April 30th at uh, midnight at 11.59 p.m. 
And it's a really <laughs> tremendous offer. I mean, it's $10,000 over the asking price, whatever it is. Cash, no inspections. Um, close in two weeks. What happens then? The seller actually has the right to change that listing contract. And that's where you get into, that's where it can get a little ugly. Because if that seller changes their minds and says, you know, I want to take a hard look at that contract, send it over to me, and calls you an hour later and says, you know, I really want to take this offer. I don't want to risk putting it out on the market, having showings start at the end of the week, and losing this offer that's really going to do everything we need it to do. So I want you to change the terms of the listing contract to say that we are going to start showing the house immediately and accepting any all offers immediately. Well, I can tell you, uh, as several agents can tell you, that if you are going to go down that road, you better tread very, very carefully. You would better make sure that before that offer is reviewed, that you get a signed addendum, excuse me, signed amendment to the listing contract stating that the seller is now going to uh, review any and all offers and has the right to accept any and all offers at any time. And then post that on the MLS and upload the document to the MLS. All of those things have to happen before you can send that document over or ask your, your seller to sign that document. Um, I can tell you that, that we've had more than one agent uh, have to face uh, uh, questions from the, uh, from the multiple listing on this issue. So when you get walking down that road, be very, very careful. If you're going to postpone a listing uh, showing starting uh, and, and offer a review, you have to be very specific with dates and times as to when those offers, uh, when those showings are going to begin and when offers are going to be uh, reviewed and accepted or rejected. So that's, that's the broad thing. Um, some agents, a lot of agents, put, buyer agents put deadlines on for acceptance. They put a deadline on and then they uh, get upset when the listing agent and the seller don't respond within their deadline, which may be that day, a few hours, then even the next day. And what we all have to remember is that seller has no obligation whatsoever to act on your purchase agreement that you've written um, according to your deadlines. They are not beholden to your deadlines. Only your buyer is. And if your buyer wants to pressure someone into accepting the offer, it may work and it may not. And you have to understand and, and make your, your buyers understand that if that seller doesn't want to be pressured by that deadline, that they can simply ignore them. And that's part of the deal. That's just part of the game. So um, putting short deadlines in this kind of a market uh, will very often result in your offer going expired, uh, your offer ending, before a seller even had the chance to uh, review your offer and others that may come in. So I, I encourage you to be very careful. Um, read to you just a few of these things. A uh, dual commission agreement exists. Now, a dual commission agreement is different from dual agency. A dual commission agreement is very specific. Uh, it means that if I as a listing agent, as, if I as the seller's listing agent, let's pretend that I'm charging 6% commission, but I say to them, you know what? If I have a buyer and I write an offer with that buyer, I'll cut my commission to a total of 4 or 4.5%, let's say. And you put that in writing. The moment that you put that in writing and get the seller to sign that, you have to disclose to the real estate community that a dual commission arrangement exists. You have to disclose that on the multiple listing. 
And if you are asked, you have to disclose what the differential is. In other words, if it was 6%, but with my own buyer, it would be 4.5%, you have to tell them that I'm shaving one and a half percentage points off the, off the commission price, uh, the commission charge. So um, again, you have to be very specific about the language that you use in when, you, when you're putting a listing up um, and um, know the difference between a dual commission agreement and a dual agency agreement. Uh, here's a good, um, here's one we found. All offers due by 5 o'clock p.m. on 426 of 19. Hmm. Okay. So what? Can offers be, pre be, be given prior to that? Absolutely. It doesn't say that the seller won't review offers prior to that. It just says all offers do by 5 p.m. on 426. So the seller actually, based on that, the seller has the right to review an offer that's written on 424 and accept it because it doesn't say anywhere in that language. And so what happens is agents who are reading this on the multiple listing are confused. They think that it implies that that seller is not going to review offers until 426 at 5 p.m., but that's not what the language says. And so they, they're understandably upset when they find out that the seller has accepted an offer the day before when it says all offers due by 5 p.m. on the following day. But the, but the language didn't say that. So if it's your intention as a listing agent to hold off on presentation and acceptance of offers until no earlier than 5 p.m. on 426, for example, then you have to say that. You have to be very clear in the listing contract as well as in the uh, comments and agent remarks that the seller requests that offers will not be, uh, that offers will um, be delivered prior to 526 and offers will not be reviewed until uh, no sooner than 5 p.m. on 426, excuse me, got my dates wrong there. But you get the idea. You have to be very, very specific about um, the deadlines and the time frames in which uh, an offer is going to be presented. Because in this clause that I just read to you, it doesn't say that they can't accept an offer before then. Does it say anything in there that identifies when those offers that are delivered by 5 p.m. on 426, when are they going to be presented? When are they going to be accepted? I don't know. Could be a week. I would imagine that a number of those would expire within that time. It doesn't say here that they will be reviewed on the same day or within 24 hours. So again, I think it's really important that we are very specific in writing this language. Um, one of them is no buyer's letters. Well, that's already covered in the listing contract, if, uh, in the, at least in GRAR it is, and, and you may want to check with some of the others, your, your uh, local boards. But what does, it's kind of vague if it's just written no buyer's letters. I mean, I think we get it, but I think it would be better said that seller uh, will not review any letters, uh, personal letters from buyers uh, regarding their their personal uh, family uh, is matters or whatever. Um, again, it's probably okay. It communicates to agents, uh, but still agents are a little bit confused about the whole buyer letter thing out there and why uh, a listing agent wouldn't want a buyer letter to be part of the equation. So again, more specificity is probably best. Um, 
Highest and best. Uh, I got a call myself the other day um, on a listing, and I said, and they said, um, "Are you going to go high? Are you going to go highest and best?" <laughs> and I said, and I had to laugh. I'm sorry. I was just. I said, "Really? You're in this market. You're asking me if I'm going to come back to you and counter or call you and say." deliver your highest and best by tomorrow? And the, and the answer was from the agent was yes. And I said, you better write your highest and best now. You may not get another chance. I, I, it just blew me away that an agent would actually ask me the question, are you going to go highest and best in a market like this when you may ho have, as a buyer's agent, you may only have one opportunity to write an offer. If it were my buyer, I'd explain that to him and say, you better come out with guns blazing or you may not get another chance. It's as simple as that. Um, any and all offers will be reviewed by seller on Monday the 29th at 6 p.m. That's pretty good. Um, again, what happens if you get an offer prior to that? Does this say that they, it, it, it kind of does imply that they're not going to review offers, but it doesn't specifically say they're not going to review offers. And again, what happens if the seller changes their mind and says, you know, I don't want to lose that really good offer that just came in. Um, well, according to this, they shouldn't have reviewed it, but that's not our right under the Michigan Occupational Code to withhold that information from the seller, is it? We don't have the right to hold a bunch of offers over here and say, well, I'm not going to tell you, anything, tell you anything about them until Monday. If that's what you want, if that's the intention, then your words on the listing contract need to say that. Seller will not review you know that they will offers will not be presented to seller uh, at seller's request until Monday. That's a little bit more specific in terms of the seller saying, "No, I don't want to look at any offers, and I refuse to look at any offers." Now, again, what happens if they change their minds? Now you've got a bunch of real estate agents out there that you have promised that the seller is not going to look at their offers. And um, they're going to be pretty upset when they find out that the house actually sold uh, because the seller, again, de decided to change their mind. Uh, but that's, that's part of the risk. Um, offer deadline of 5 p.m. Hmm. Wow. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, this week, next week, I can't tell. Um, highest and best offers due by Monday of uh, what week or month? Um, Krista, Grar has written, overwritten, overridden my sentence and says no buyer's letters. That's interesting. Thanks, Krista. I'm going to look into that with um, Pam when I'm done here. Um, I, I don't know what it was, but uh, that's really good information, and I will check with Pam at the board um, as to uh, the reason for them overriding it. Uh, thanks for sharing that. Um, now, here's a pretty good one. Seller directs that any offers received shall not be presented or reviewed prior to 4 p.m. Ooh, he's doing so good. And then it just stopped. 4 p.m. when? Um, Monday? The 30th? When? I'm not real clear on that part, but it's doing really well for a while. Um, no showings until offers reviewed after five will not be addressed until the next business day. You know, that's kind of an okay one. I, I kind of like that. It doesn't say um, 
it's not putting a specific date on it, but it's saying, if you send me an offer at five, I'm not gonna run out that night and present it. And if your seller is okay with that and wants that, then by all means, I think it's fine to put that on the listing contract and then present it on the multiple listing. Um, delayed submission. Delayed submission is a little bit different. Delayed submission is an agreement that the seller signs that says, we're not going to make this go live until, let's say, um, June 1st. Delayed submission are usually a little bit longer time frame to keep them off the market. In other words, I as a listing agent want to secure that listing right now, but I understand that I'm not going to be able to market it in any way, shape, or form, not on Facebook, not with a sign, not with coming soon, not with uh, a mailer to the neighborhood, not with door knocking. I cannot market that property in any way, shape, or form under a delayed submission agreement until it goes live on the date specified on the contract. So, again, be very, very clear about the difference between a postponement of showings versus a delayed submission agreement. Um, coming soon, a lot of, I get this question a lot. Can I put a coming soon uh, notice on uh, a sign in the yard, a mailer, a, um, on Facebook, can I do any of that coming soon? And the answer is yes, until you have a signed listing contract. If your potential listing your uh, friend, neighbor, uh, family member says, you know, I'm going to be listing my house with you May 1st. Um, but in the meanwhile, uh, you're welcome to put a sign in the yard that says coming soon. Now, the reason that that is okay to do is that that seller is not obligated to the terms of the multiple listing, the, the, the uh, requirements of the multiple listing, until they agree to that listing contract and all of its terms. In other words, they're free to do whatever they want. They're free to let you do whatever you want in terms of putting a sign up. And the MLS has no jurisdiction over them to do that. However, um, <laughs> pocket listings, thanks Leo. Um, and that's exactly what people call them. Um, they say, I've got a pocket listing. Um, well, what exactly is your definition of a pocket listing? Because if your definition of a pocket listing is that you have signed a contract and you stick it in your pocket and don't load it up to the MLS, um, you are in violation of the MLS regulations until unless that listing contract specifically states that the seller has requested that this not be listed, this property not be listed on the multiple listing. And you're still gonna to have to provide it to the MLS to prove to them that you have this and you have the seller's authority to keep it off the MLS. But why in the world would any seller want to do that? Uh, maybe very rare circumstances, but isn't the purpose of the MLS uh, to get as much exposure as possible? It seems to me it would be. Now, if you're referring to a pocket listing as coming soon, um, where you don't have a listing yet, um, it's, it's not a pocket listing. It's not a list, any listing, it's not any kind. It's just this, this house is gonna come up for sale soon thing. It's not a listing. I caution agents to use against using the phrase pocket listing because it is confusing and because it can cause another agent out there on the MLS to call the board and report it saying you're holding something up and withholding it from the MLS and they want proof that you have uh, a legitimate right to do that and they have the right to check on that. Leo, what if the sellers posted on Facebook before the listing dates? Great questions, Leo, um, as I would expect. Uh, they ha you can't control the seller. 
if you have a delayed submission or if you have a postponement, you don't, you can't control what that seller may or may not do. They may go on to the uh, Facebook, uh, social media, um, email, uh, and say, hey, our house is going to go up for sale on May 1st. Um, and, uh, and, and you know, it's going to be listed with Leo or, or whatever. But we can't control what our clients do. They have a right to market their homes even though they've given us the exclusive right to sell. There's a difference. We have the exclusive, if we have a contract with them, such as a delayed submission, even a delayed submission form or a postponement, we still have an exclusive right to sell. So if they decide that they want to go on the Facebook and post it and announce it, we can't stop them. Um, but I caution that you probably ought to have the conversation with the client that we still can't show the house until that live date uh, because they signed a delayed submission agreement. So I hope that answers the question on that one. Um, and wow, we've gone through quite a few. Um, you got another one, Don? Nothing? Um, this is a, a phrase that we have uh, we've seen buyer agents and buyers to verify all details and confirm for themselves um, probably not a bad phrase it's already on the multiple listing form um, but I can tell you that it won't stop someone from suing you and Five Star if they feel as though there was an intention to mislead. If they feel as though that seller did not disclose something or disclosed something incorrectly with malicious intent and or that you as an agent, the listing agent, um, posted that information and, and, and essentially uh, copied that information, incorrect information, knowingly, it's not going to stop them from suing Five Star and you uh, for that uh, information. That clause is not going to get you out of a lawsuit uh, if they feel as though it was done, uh, the, the disclosure was done fraudulently um, or any post any any information like boundaries or easements or any of those things if that was if they feel as though they were misled or misrepresented uh, uh, they will still come after you regardless of that sentence so um, I hope that helped today um, we are going to do our best to uh, create more clauses um, oh wait a minute. I hope you all know where you can find a bunch of clauses right now uh, it's in dot loop under templates. If you go way over to the left hand side and all the way down past where you find the forms for purchase agreements and so on, go all the way down to the bottom, click on clauses, and there's a whole bunch of uh, clauses that we've already written for you. For example, one that um, is an escalation clause. I get a lot of questions about how to write an escalation clause or how to interpret an escalation clause that another agent has written. And if you go into clauses and look up escalation clause, it's like right in the middle of the, the toward the top, um, you will discover that it, it will answer all of your questions because it talks about it being a net offer, in other words, minus um, seller concessions. Um, that it has to be a, a pre-qualified buyer, a bona fide offer, and that they have to provide the underlying offer that's triggered the sale, um, and that basically if there are competing escalation clauses that they ramp up. You just don't escalate them once. If they're bumping each other up to their maximums, it's like the example I give of kids choosing who goes first by putting their hands up over a bat and the one who lands on top wins. It's the same with escalation clauses. Leo has another question here. 
uh, which is some, uh, can you, ex uh, yes. Leo asks, can you explain the exclusive right to sell versus exclusive agency when we broker load? Exclusive right to sell is exactly what it means. I have, as a listing agent and company, I have the exclusive right to sell your property. You, as a homeowner, do not have the right to sell your property. I do. You've given me that right. Therefore, no matter who buys it, within the terms of the listing contract, I am going to get paid. I like that. Now, and an exclusive agency, if you choose the option exclusive agency, it means that I'm the only agent slash broker that you've chosen to sell your property. In other words, you as a homeowner have the right still to sell your own property, but if you buy it through uh, Don at Five Star, that Don at Five Star will get paid as a listing agent and there may be another broker involved as a buyer's agent. Now, you'll see this quite often in build jobs. A builder may say, you know, um, you're welcome to put a sign in my yard. Um, if you find a buyer, great. Uh, even if, you, if, 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 if a buyer agent comes to you, uh, we can get it on the MLS, and if, and if we get a, a, a great offer doing that, I'm happy to pay you uh, a listing uh, brokerage fee. But in the meanwhile, if that same buyer's agent comes directly to me, the builder, I have the right to sell it and not pay you a commission. So that's exclusive agency. The exclusive right to sell is a much more powerful contract for you. Hope that explains it. Um, what else we got? I think we're probably at the end of our half hour. Um, thanks for joining. I hope it uh, helped a little bit. Uh, Ninja Golf Outing. See you then. Have a great day.